Hello everyone, as you can see right now I'm showing you this wonderful M1000 I just got. It is 1000 watts mercury vapor and it is from 1989. Pretty cool, however, we're not going to be talking about that light today. We're going to be talking about these two lights that I've had for a little while now and I would like to go over them. As you can see here, I have two Westinghouse OV-15s, or like some people like to call them, Krauss Heinz L-150s. However, that isn't 100% confirmed as of right now. No one has found an L-150 Krauss Heinz version of this light. However, I do believe that they possibly exist. Now, this is the third generation OV-15, and I believe right before the OVS and OVM came out, um, I believe they actually probably made some with the Krauss Heinz L150 label. However, these are a little bit older and there are some slight differences and these are Westinghouse OV15s as the sticker on the inside clearly um, labels the brand as Westinghouse. Now there are Westinghouse L150s that do apparently exist. There is a brochure that shows it. However, I don't really know what that means in regards to the model of this light, but it is safe to say that these right here are Westinghouse OV-15s. They're just third generation versions. Anyways, these are very cool. Um, they are 175 watts mercury vapor, and they are slightly different. As you can see uh, visually, this one actually has a really cool rare a Westinghouse uh, plastic lens and this one obviously uh, this one doesn't have any uh, labeling on the sticker I think it's washed off and the brackets are different and that one on the right here uses a glass lens now they are both really cool lights and they're not easy to find but they aren't too rare but I would like to go over this one because of its lens it is very rare and we will take a look at that right now so here's our first uh, Westinghouse third generation OV-15. This one I like a lot because this one right here actually has a plastic lens and we will go over a little bit more about that lens. But for the most part, this is a very good light. Overall, the housing is very durable and um, I like the how the ballast uh, assembly is installed in this light, which we will look at in just a moment. Anyway, let's go over some of the basic details of the outside of the light. First, on the top here, you can see the nice uh, square body shape that they went with. Um, I think these were made kind of into the 80s, from what I know. Um, so this has a very 80s design. The photocell socket is right in the back. Um, let me take the photocell off. This um, came with it. It's just one of those generic uh, Fisher Pierce SunTech photocells that they love to use up here in Detroit or um, at least DTE, uh, their contractors use these. Um, our company uses black versions for our LED replacements. Um, here's the photo cell socket. You can see it's just a general, just a general Westinghouse Cooper style photo cell socket. Um, Westinghouse's uh, early, uh, earlier versions of their lights, they had sockets that would plug in at the bottom. This one just has the wires coming straight out, and this design pretty much continued um, until, well, now they're still making the Cooper lights. Um, they still have this design today. Um, basically, you just unscrew these a little bit, and of course you put either a screwdriver or you can put your photo cell on, I guess, if you want to, and just kind of twist it in position take the photo cell off or if you're using the screwdriver hold it there and then screw those screws back down and it holds that right on pretty nice I'll go ahead and flip the light over so we can look at the bracket assembly on here here is that so I am missing a couple bolts here but basically what um, this version has is just these um, giant bolts that kinda come through they lock into the slot here um, above the light and they kind of sit up right here now they are supposed to be glued however um, these ones uh, the glue is worn off and are moving around considerably and I just actually freed that one from moving it around now I don't know if I entirely like this design although it looks really good on the light you can see that this has rusted a bit and this is pretty much just from being exposed to the elements and you can see some corrosion here now, this is Detroit. There's a lot of salt, and there's a lot of rain and snow here sometimes in the state of Michigan. So, this light is unfortunately at the same time just suffering from the weathering that 
happens up here in Michigan from the winter weather. Um, but for the most part, um, whether it's enclosed or not, I do appreciate these two brackets here. Um, they just screw down and they're very strong, I bet, when they're up on the light. And they're very good and they're very adjustable. So I do actually like the brackets design. The thing I just am not too happy about is how it's open. But so far, this is great. Um, the photo cell, you can see, comes right up here under the back. And they have kind of a divider here, so they do at least kind of keep the inside closed. Um, you can see that the uh, wires for that go there. And when the arm is in and your wires are coming out, they actually go through this little space right here to enter inside the light. Now, with that said, let's go ahead and open um, the light and we can take a look at the refractor door. So to open up, it's pretty easy. Like, the, like some of the newer lights, like the OVZ or the OVS or the OVX, it just has a simple latch that you pull back on right here, comes unclipped, and you just pull the door up and over until it comes off. It's pretty easy. So here is the door. I do apologize for some of the dirt that's on it. Um, the rest of the light is not dirty on the inside, but the door is pretty nice. Um, you can see they've used the silver paint and it has worn off on the top. Westinghouse has used the silver paint um, for a long time until um, they went over to Krauss Heinz. They finally started adding color to their lights. Um, I don't know if there's any uh, Westinghouse lights that have solid color paint like a gray or a dark gray or a black. However, they definitely stuck with the times of the 50s when lights were usually silver and kept their silver paint scheme. But as you can see here, here is the NEMA sticker. This one is a little different. Um, it's more of a paper feel and you can see the print is just cracking. But at least we can see that it's blue and it's 175 watts mercury vapor because of that blue color. So pretty nice. Um, the sticker is not a huge deal. I can always make a replacement sticker that looks exactly the same with my artistic skills and you wouldn't even notice the difference. The inside uh, is pretty nice. Um, to undo your refractor here, you just twist this. Now with this plastic lens, it's a little hard, but all you do, if I can do it by hand and on camera, just twist that, and then your refractor comes loose, and you just kind of unslide it from those uh, little uh, flaps right there. And then you got your refractor out in case you have to replace it. The metal is pretty thick on this. I do like these older lights. And here is the Westinghouse sticker. So unfortunately mine does not seem to have any sort of labeling whatsoever. It doesn't have the cat number, it doesn't have what the second thing is, it doesn't have the voltage. Um, the line volts is 120 or 240, so it is partially multi-tap, but it doesn't say lamp type, lamp watts, lamp amps, or the date code. For some reason they didn't put it on this. Um, I noticed on some of the Krauss Heinz and Westinghouse lights that I've gotten that are mercury vapor, they don't put this info on. However, the high pressure sodium ones I've seen that we've been taking down do have that. So I don't understand uh, what that is, but unfortunately I have no info really on this light other than that it is made by Westinghouse and what the model is, but we don't know exactly what it is. If this was a new person and they were working with this light, they wouldn't understand anything about it if they were to try servicing it or learning about it. But at least we know what the specs are of the light. Um, and with that, let's go ahead and look at this really cool refractor. Um, so most of these uh, Westinghouse OV-15s use the glass lens, which we will see later on with the other one. However, very rarely they will use this plastic lens. Now, I'm not sure if they ever used this on the older Westinghouse OV-15s. However, this Westinghouse OV-15 that I got came with this lens. It's um, a slight bit yellowed, and as you can see, there are some minor cracks. However, that hasn't really changed the integrity of this lens. The lens is very thick. Um, it's very well molded. There's no sharp edges on the plastic. It's very uh, finished, and it feels really cool overall. And this one actually has the Westinghouse logo on it, which, if you can see, is printed in a very fine print. Um, it is slightly yellowed. However, I hear mercury vapor yellows these uh, lenses. 
However, the only time I've seen lenses yellow on uh, mercury vapor lamps is when they put plastic lenses on 250 watt mercury lamps. So I'm going to assume that the yellowing on this is just from some of the weathering that it's probably had over time. Um, and that's practically actually where the cracking comes. Usually when these yellow, um, sometimes the cracks form because dirt gets in it. So nothing but a little retro breading uh, can't do to whiten this lens back up and look brand new. Um, with this, um, Unfortunately with the cracks still because these won't go away. But um, if it was real burning, um, it would probably look more orangish as to where this is kind of a light yellow for right now. But really nice design um, for the plastic lens. I love the two-way design. The refractor patterns are very big and they're very clear. Very, uh, very unique lens. One thing I've always liked about some of the older companies is when they made their own plastic lenses, they didn't use, um, sometimes they would use the same exact shape because this is actually the same exact shape as the glass lens. Um, but the design pattern is different and I do appreciate that they keep that unique because um, it makes these aws more awesome than they um, really are. So really cool. There are later versions of these that Krauss Heinz started using on their OVSs and they do exist here in Detroit. I know where there are some 110 watt high pressure sodium lights. Uh, Cross Heinz OVS's that use these. However, I don't think they have the Westinghouse logo on them. I believe those are actually made by Lexalite. Um, and I was trying to see if this was made by Lexalite, but if we look at the sides here, it doesn't really say on it, which I'll put this other end here, it doesn't say on it that it's made by Lexalite, but if we do look, coming up here, you can see that it does say it's made by Westinghouse style refractor, but it doesn't say anywhere on it that it's made by Lexalite. So I'm going to assume that when uh, Krauss Heinz bought the company out, they probably had another company make these lenses for them, and um, from there Lexalite owned them and made the lenses. The one I have here is a Westinghouse version, and these are very rare and very hard to find. Um, as most of these um, were not used on the lights anyway. With that said, let me bring uh, the glass lens over and we can do a little comparison with them. And by magic, we have the glass lens here. As you can see, there are some major differences and some things are kind of the same in regards to the uh, refractor patterns. But as you can see overall, the shape, I'm gonna put a few angles here, is the same. And I like that so much that they're the same, but the style of the pattern is different. All the pattern designs on here are pretty much the same size and look. However, on this one you do have some smaller designs in the middle here, and then some larger ones on the side. Really, really nice. Um, this is made by Holofane. I don't know if this is made by Westinghouse, but I'm going to confirm that it, for now that it is. Um, since there isn't any other labeling on it. But overall, they are both cool lenses, and I really love this uh, Westinghouse um, plastic lens for the OV-15. It's very cool. Um, with that said now, um, let's go ahead and move on inside the light and see what the insides have to offer for us. So the good quality does continue into this light. Um, one thing I really appreciate about this light right off the bat is this. Now this has a clip-in um, ballast assembly. I can undo this ballast very easily just by unscrewing these two nuts here and I can pull the ballast straight out and it kind of just sits on these rough spots here and it's great because if this ever goes bad, um, let's say this isn't service and this goes bad, you can easily replace the ballast just by unscrewing it and there's no brackets that you have to try to align with, um, you don't have the drilling holes, modify anything, you can easily slip another one in, set it down, screw this back down, and it holds it right in place and it's just perfect, perfect design. I wish other companies did that like GE um, at the time, uh, ITT I believe before it was American Electric. They never really did this type of thing and that's one thing that this company definitely got right 
when um, moving into this version of the light. I think so far this version of the OV-15 is probably one of the nice ones since it has all this optional stuff um, with it. So pretty awesome. The high pressure sodium ones are very interesting to mention too um, as I have seen the inside of a uh, 100 watt high pressure sodium one. The ballast is literally the size of a ballast in like one of those small area lights, kind of like that one I got hanging out right there. Very tiny and it's funny seeing it right under this big clip. But that's the magic about this clip is you can put any ballast you want in here and it'll, um, it'll sit and fit fine because it just has to be clipped down and sit right on the spot right here. So if you wanted to, you actually could put a 400 watt mercury vapor, watts mercury vapor in this light, which this does exist in 400 watts uh, mercury vapor, I believe, and high pressure sodium, which is really cool. But overall, I like this design. I think one of the best uh, mounting designs for a transformer in a street light of all time. Let's start off with the basics as usual. Coming into um, the street light gap here, the little gap that we got here, your wires basically just route up into the socket terminal here, which is made of ceramic or porcelain. I don't know which one. Pretty nice. Um, this definitely did come from a time where they were still using some of this uh, ceramic and porcelain stuff, just because this light is a little old. Um, it is broke right there, but no big deal. Um, that's fine. Um, this is wired for 120 and 240. Um, and as of right now, obviously I have it wired for 120, so I can use it in my apartment here. To do that, actually, the wires are numbered, as you can see. There's some swapping around that you have to do. I'm not going to get into how to wiring it for 240, as I don't think that's very relevant and important. But I will at least show you what the, where these wires go. So right here, right here, this is your hot. This is your neutral terminal here, and this middle one is really just used for splicing. Of course, your hot goes down your photocell, and your red goes up into your socket and splices right here. And then these two wires actually go into the transformer here, and some of the wires go over to your capacitor. This capacitor is original. There are some of these that exist here that have bad capacitors. Um, I think these were... These lights were coming into a time where capacitors really were starting to suck. Um, this one has its original one. And from the transformer and capacitor, we go right into our socket terminal here. And I like the socket terminal here. You got lots of room for adjustment and pivoting. Um, if I can put the angle just right, or if I can show you. It's kind of hard to see, but it's that little thing right there. You can actually pivot. Let me go on this side. You can pivot the socket up down. I actually did adjust it as the light bulb was kind of hitting the refractor, it was rubbing. So I did adjust it a little bit and it's in the perfect position for perfect light distribution. So I like the options you got here. And what is nice is we do have modern style screws, which these are Phillips head screws. At the time these were kind of the lock type screw. But obviously now everyone likes to use these, so these um, are kind of nice to take apart with just a normal modern day screwdriver. You got your wires coming into your socket here, there's a little piece of cardboard they used to divide it. There's a minor extender here to push the socket out, I guess, I don't know why they have that. And actually, I, can, I think I can kind of see it on the sticker, I believe that actually says Westinghouse, but I'm not sure. But overall, nice socket design here for adjustment, and your socket comes right into here. Um, this refractor is actually a little bit uh, corroded inside. Um, I don't understand how that got in here. It probably just came in through the lens. Um, but that doesn't mean it's not a good reflector. It is made of a nice metal. We have the little seal right here, which most of the time these peel off, but this one has survived, so I'm glad to see that it's still on. That keeps the water out, and um, basically refractor just screws in right there with another Phillips head screw. There's not much really going on here, but overall it's a good design. And last but not least, we got your latch right here that helps to clip on your uh, door. There's just kind of a tension spring down there and it pushes it back like that. 
and when you're shut you're good to go so overall really nice light and yeah there's not really much to say um, bad about this light overall it is a wonderful sweet light and I really do like the design now let's go ahead and look at the other one I went ahead and set the Westinghouse OV15 right next to my um, M1000 and now we can go ahead and look at this one so this one is slightly different obviously seeing that the lens is different um, and the way that it's set up on the inside is slightly different but there's not much going on with this light either other than some of the good features that it has um, this light had this photo cell just another SunTech it's an older 2011 generic uh, photo cell but basically um, with the with everything being very similar I'll go ahead and just still kind of show you how to open it and how to use it and how to service it you just open it up again pull that over and your door is off with the door being off we can look at the door again you can see it's pretty much the same design um, door um, the sticker is not on the inside of the door it actually is inside the light this time and it's basically the same other than the um, thing that keeps the refractor down it is slightly different it actually resembles more of the uh, newer lights uh, Cooper lights that um, have this type of uh, latch to keep this over and the refractor of course it's just a standard Holofine uh, prismatic lens I don't exactly know what the model number or name of this lens is specifically but it just has that standard diamond shape and pretty much all of the newer lights um, from this point on um, continue to use this light um, the OVX and OVZ um, higher wattage lamps actually use this lens still um, to this day so not really anything too crazy going on here but it is a good quality Hall of Fame lens. Our NEMA sticker must be made of a different material here as this actually is just a silver square sticker now. Um, I don't know if the print just washed off here or this never had um, anything printed on it. I'm sure it probably did. But it doesn't really say um, 175 watts on anymore. It's just a blank silver sticker now. So not really good either but not really too big of a deal anyway as the sticker can always be replaced but of course the door pretty nice design it's very simple the lens is great and the metal is very durable on it now coming over to the light we got the same situation here with the clips um it is chipped on here from when they were throwing it away i don't know if these are replacement clips but i'm pretty sure these are original to this light now these are like stainless steel clips and they're much much bigger also these uh, these uh, threads here they're not actually bolts as you can see on the side there's no bolts sticking out so they actually are threaded into the bottom of the light which I think is a much better design actually since um, water can't really get in from the top now and loosen the glue up that holds these so I really like that a lot um, it is still open but I don't really care um, these clips are bigger, they're actually stainless steel, and they're not going to rust, but the threads are still rusting. Um, there is supposed to be a divider here. Um, this one is, I think, missing its divider. Actually, yeah, it is. You can see there was some a screw there holding that divider, but this one doesn't have it, but I will fix that problem in the future. Of course, let's just pretend that there is one here while reviewing this light. As you can see, we got the photo cell socket here. It is exactly the same as the other one. And if the thing was here, there would be a little gap here to let the wires come into the light. Now, coming into the light, you can see that it is different. The sticker is actually mounted in here. Um, and I will note that the sticker is the same as the other one. It doesn't say the date on it. It doesn't say uh, the lamp watts. Um, the lamp type or any information whatsoever on that sticker we will still look at it but just a heads up on that um, as you can see the capacitor is now on the right side the bracket that installs this is upside down the transformer is a little smaller even though it is still 175 watts this is smaller 
And this one is not multi-tap, which is probably why that's smaller now that I'm thinking about it. Um, and our socket is just a two, um, it's just a two screw socket. There isn't another um, spot for sockets um, to be add, uh, for wires to be spliced or um, wires to be screwed down. So we got a smaller socket. It is still made of ceramic or porcelain. I don't know exactly. Um, but it is a two wire, not a three wire um, socket. With the differences in the slate, it's still the same setup. You got your socket with your hot coming out to the photocell. Your red wire comes up into the transformer here. And then your wires from your transformer either go to your socket or capacitor. And then everything comes back on your neutral as usual. So it's doing the same exact thing. It's just different here. The socket adjuster is the same. We just got some flathead screws instead on here in some spots, but it pivots the same way and it does adjust the same way and it has the numbers provided so you can pick a spot that you want it. And this one I had to adjust to as it also was in the same type of position as the other one. Really, really nice. Um, I'll go ahead and flip it around. Now this is slightly different, the refractor here. This refractor does not screw down. This one actually comes out. So if we go right here, you can see it has a slip on right there. And when we slide that out right here, you can actually lift the refractor here. It is a little difficult. Oh, well, I guess it's gonna be easy for me today. You just slide it right out off the socket and you can take it out. Um, I don't know uh, what reason you would actually need to take this out for this easily, but if needed, you can. With it out, we can look at, um, we can just look at it overall. Um, the little gasket here is kind of starting to come off. I will make that repair sometime in the future, but for the most part, it's still intact. Usually these fall off all the time, especially on the new lights. Sorry, the reflector design overall is really good. Um, this one actually has a sticker in it saying what this lamp is. However, this one's pretty badly worn. However, we can at least see that it says Mercury. Of course, to put it back on, you would just slide it back onto the socket. You want to it up there so it goes on top of that. Come back down. Oops, sorry about that. Come back down to here and push that back so that slides uh, right onto that slot. Not easy, but if you work it, I'm sure you can do it. But if you can work with it, it's not a huge deal. That is probably one minor flaw about this refractor is that it's kind of hard to put back on. But once it's on, it does um, stay on pretty well for the most part. But that's not a huge deal. Um, again, this light overall is really good. And like I mentioned at the start, you can see it doesn't say the date, doesn't say the lamp type, the volts, or anything on it. However, luckily being a street light enthusiast, I already know how this light operates. Um, but it's pointless putting the stickers on if there really is no information on them whatsoever. So, again, I don't know why they did that. I think that sticker is to, uh, is the diagram, but it's also really worn out. Despite the stickers being worn out, the inside of the light is very, very clean. You can see a kind of a hazing of corrosion, but it is very clean. This one I cleaned, um, and it came out really nice. Overall, I'm very happy with this light too. So, really nice uh, light. I'm gonna go ahead and put that refractor back in. I really do like these lights. I'm gonna go ahead and try to hook both of them up so we can see both of them light up since they're easy to wire. I got two mercury lamps here. Uh, one I'll use is just this um, newer Sylvania lamp. Not too special. And I don't know um, exactly what brand this light bulb is. It doesn't really say on it. But I will be using this one as well. Anyway, let's go ahead and screw those in and get started. Okay, I got the curtains closed and both lights set up as good as I could. So I do apologize if they're not completely in shot. However, that does not 100% matter as we are only focused on the light part of the street light. I went ahead and put some shorting caps on. They might be kind of out of shot, but you can just kind of see them on the edge of the screen here. Um, just because um, if I try to plug them in, um, they both might kick on at different times. So I do want these to warm up at the same time simultaneously. 
anyways, let's go ahead and get started. I'm now going to plug them in. This is the Westinghouse OV15 175 watt mercury vapor uh, third generation street light in one, two, three. Oh yes, I just love how they both started up. Now keep in mind there are two different bulbs in here. The older one I think has more hours on it and the new one has um, maybe not as much. Um, this one has the newer bulb and this one has the older one. And as you can see they are uh, giving off slightly different colors. This one's a little whiter probably because there's not as much vapor um, in it to ignite. But this one's more red because it uh, has more vapors to ignite. But anyway let's go ahead and watch them warm up. All right, both streetlights are at their full brightness. Let's go ahead and turn them on their sides here. There's one. Oh, that's not gonna be very easy, is it? Let me stand right behind them. I'm struggling here, but they are a little bit warm. And here's two. Now, just looking at both of the lights, they do appear by my eye to be be about the same brightness, but. This one with a slightly older bulb, you can actually kind of tell, I think, in the video that it is slightly dimmer, but I think they're very close to being at the same amount of hours, but that's not too important. Um, you can see the lovely uh, design of the refractors here. I'm going to try to bring them up a little bit closer as they are displaying their lovely, lovely mercury vapor colors. Um, this other one seems to be doing a better job at sitting on its side. But this one here uh, is not. Let me try that. There we go. And I can move the camera around a little bit and we can take a closer look at the uh, lenses on these lights. You can see from this lovely angle shot here the wonderful designs of each um, street lamp here. I really love this plastic lens that Westinghouse has made for their lights. I actually think it looks a lot cooler and I think it's a lot more unique than the actual uh, standard Holofane lens. But you can see those nice big patterns here on the back. You can kind of see the smaller ones and on the front as well as medium ones. And I'll kind of turn it to the side here. You can also see that lovely Westinghouse logo embossed on the refractor here. Really, really nice. Let's take a look at the other one. I know this one's pretty familiar to you all, but doesn't mean we can't look at the beautiful uh, detailing in the glass. A little bit more basic here. The designs are pretty much all the same in size and style, but nonetheless, it's pretty. And the only thing that really is uh, written on here is that uh, you can kind of faintly see it through the sign wave here, but that two-way um, embossing on here. On the back you have Hall of Fame's normal uh, rough design, of course, coming up towards the front. It's pretty normal with the designs. If that's one thing Hall of Fame does on every one of their lenses is they always put this detail on the back of their uh, two-way lenses. So that's kind of how you can tell it's a Hall of Fame lens, just by looking at it with your eyes. But really, really nice um, lights. Of course, in real life, they give off more of a whitish color, but on camera, they're giving off more of a green. Um, I do have a couple clear mercuries that I probably could have used, but for this, uh, for the sake of this video, I just decided to use um, those phosphor-coated ones that I had. With that, I'm going to open up the blinds here, and we can see how bright it really is in the room. Although it is getting kind of towards the end of the day. Up here, up oh, my my OVZ and the wall that I just shut off. Let's go ahead and unplug them now. 
awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And with that, I'd like to say thank you for watching, everyone. Um, please like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. And let me know down in the comments if there's anything about these lights I haven't mentioned. You know, new advice always helps me to learn. But anyway, um, thanks for watching, and yeah, everyone have a good day. Bye-bye. You can just hear the photo cell clicking on and off on that for that corn bulb in there.